to be moved across the equal sign. Okay, now we can kind of see the shortcut. Okay, so let's do a couple questions using the shortcut. So if I state the x-intercepts of this equation here, I can just, I know that eventually this positive 3 is going to move across the equal sign and become negative. So one of my x-intercepts is x equals negative 3. My other x-intercept, when that negative 1 moves across the equal sign, is going to be positive 1. Those are my two x-intercepts. Nice and short and easy. Okay, so it doesn't matter which variable is in front of this, is in front of these two factors, because what's going to happen is that is going to get divided out first. It's going to be divided by zero, so it's going to just get eliminated. Okay, so don't even pay attention to what's in front of there at, when you're finding the x-intercepts. Okay, just concentrate on what's inside the brackets. Okay, let's do another example. So the x-intercepts of this equation here, negative three times x minus five times x plus four. The x-intercepts will be no, not in highlighter. I do that a lot. are x equals 5 and x equals negative 4. Okay? The opposite integer values of what you see inside the brackets. Okay? I see a negative inside the bracket. I know that's going to be moved to the other side of the equal sign and it's going to become positive. Same with the positive 4. It's going to move to the other side and become negative. Okay? For part D here, our x-intercepts are negative 3 and negative 7. Okay. For this last one here, I have y equals x minus 6 squared. For that one, that's the same as anything squared. It just means it's being multiplied by itself. So you'll notice both x-intercepts are just x equals 6. So what that would look like, normally we're used to probably having two x-intercepts, right? It crosses the x-axis twice. In this instance, let's say that is 6 on the x-axis. This parabola is going to come down, just touch the x-axis, and go back up. So that would actually be the minimum value right there. Okay, So that's what that one would look like. Okay, now, so we've completed the first objective, being able to look at um, the equation of a, a parabola in factored form, and state the x-intercepts. Next, what we want to be able to do is look at the equation and be able to graph it, okay? In order to graph an equation in factored form, we need the x-intercepts, the axis of symmetry, and the vertex. So we need the x-intercepts, the axis of symmetry, and the vertex, okay? So, first step, we're good at finding the x-intercepts. Let's do that quick. For y equals 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 7, the x-intercepts are x equals negative 1, and x equals 7. Okay, So we see a positive 1 here. It's going to be moved across the equal sign and become negative. Negative 7 will be moved across the equal sign and become positive. Okay, So we have our x-intercepts. And we remember that our x-intercepts are our r and s values. Okay, So r is negative 1, s equals 7. Because our, our r and s are our that's a tongue twister. Our R and S values are our x-intercepts. Okay? So negative 1 and 7 are our R and S values. Okay? So when I find the axis of symmetry, I'm getting bored of red. Let's do a new color. Okay. Axis of symmetry. We remember our rule. It's R plus S divided by 2. So that is negative 1 plus 7 divided by 2, which is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Okay, I'm just going to quickly make a rough sketch of this parabola off to the side here so we can maybe visualize what's going on. Here. Okay, so we've got our x-intercepts at 7 and negative 1. Okay. Now we found we know the axis of symmetry goes right through the middle of the parabola. Okay. 
So it goes through the vertex and also through the middle of these x-intercepts. Okay, we just found the middle of those x-intercepts. The middle is at three on the x-axis. So that means the coordinate of the vertex must also have an x-coordinate of three. Okay, so we've solved that. Now we need to solve for the y-coordinate of the vertex. So part C, we know for the vertex, the vertex is two something. Okay, so we don't know that y value. So we just have to sub in x equals 2 in for the x values in the equation. If I go ahead and do that, I'll get y equals 2 times 2 plus 1 times 2 minus 7. That gives me y equals 2 times 3 times negative 5. Okay. That gives me y equals 6 times negative 5. And then that gives me, hold on. Okay, so, okay, so hold on. Erase what I just said for the last 15 seconds. So we determined our axis of symmetry was actually 3, not 2. Okay, so let's erase all these twos and put three. I hope that didn't confuse us too much. Okay, so all these twos that I replaced x with, it's actually supposed to be three. Sorry if I just made you do a ton of erasing at home. But... Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, so I've determined that the vertex is at 3 something, okay? We solved for the middle of negative 1 and 7 was at 3, so the vertex must also be at 3 something because this axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, okay? So the vertex is at 3 something. So we have to sub in x equals 3 into our equation, okay? If we do that, so I'm in 3 for x everywhere. We get 2 times 4 times negative 4. That's how I knew I made a mistake because when I went, you should always have um, your factors in here will most likely be um, equivalent values with opposite signs, okay? So when I saw that they weren't, I knew I might have plugged in the wrong value. But anyways, that's besides the point. Okay, so when I simplified the brackets, 3 plus 1 went to 4, 3 minus 7 went to negative 4, 2 times 4 is 8, times negative 4 is negative 32, okay? So that's the y-coordinate of the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 3, the y-coordinate is negative 32, so let's write this as a coordinate. So our vertex is... 3, negative 32. Draw a nice box around it so I know that's our final answer. Good. Now, in order to make a nice sketch of this graph, what I'm going to do is just plot the x-intercepts, roughly. They were at negative 1 and 7. And our vertex was at 3, negative 32. Okay. So it is way down here, okay? That is 0 0.3, negative 32, okay? At this point, you might be saying, hey, your rough sketch, you drew, you drew it opening up, or opening down, sorry, but it actually opens up. That's good. This was just a rough sketch just to give us an idea of, um, we knew where the x-coordinate of the vertex was going to be, but we didn't know the y. It turns out the y value is actually down here, okay? Once we figure out that y value, we can make an accurate sketch and we know that that vertex is actually down here. But the x coordinate is at 3, okay? So I'm going to sketch that now. There's the sketch of the parabola at y equals 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 7. Let's do another example like that. So if we want to sketch the graph of y equals x plus 2 times x minus 4, okay? 
we have to first find the x-intercepts. That's step number one. The x-intercepts are negative 2, so the opposite of positive 2. And x equals positive 4, the opposite of negative 4. Okay? Those are our x-intercepts. So those are our, our r and s values. So r equals negative 2, s equals 4. Let's make sure I have the right values this time. Good. So our axis of symmetry is equal to r plus s divided by 2, negative 2 plus 4 divided by 2. When I plug in the values for r and s, it gives me 2 over 2, which is a nice simple value of 1. Okay, So my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Let me just make another rough sketch of this parabola. So we know what we're working with over here, what we know so far. So far we know the x-intercepts are at negative 2 and 4, just roughly. That's about what it looks like. And we know, so I'm just going to make a rough sketch of the parabola here. Okay. We know that the middle of these two points is at 1 on the x-axis. So the axis of symmetry, the line that divides this parabola in half, is going to go through that midpoint. Okay? It's also going to go through the vertex. Move it over so it's going right through the middle. Okay? So we know it goes through the midpoint of 2 and 4, which is at 1 on the x-axis. Okay? So every point on this line is going to have an x value of 1. So that means the vertex must have an x-coordinate of 1. But we don't yet know what the y-coordinate is. It could be anywhere on this line. It could be down here. Okay? If it's down there, the parabola would then open up. Okay? We'll figure that out in the next step. Okay? So we know for our, ver our vertex is 1 something. Okay? Let's figure out what that something is. So the equation of the parabola is x plus 2 times x minus 4. x plus 2 times x minus 4. I've told you the x-coordinate of the vertex, so if we plug that in, we can then solve for that y. So let's plug that into our equation. So plug in 1 for x. One minus four. Go ahead and use our algebra skills and solve this. We get three times negative three, and that gives us negative nine. So our y value of the vertex is negative nine. Our x value is one. So all I've got to do now is plug that negative nine in for the y value. And that's the coordinate of my vertex. I'll do it in blue. So my vertex is 1, negative 9. That's the vertex of this parabola. Okay. So I know my x-intercepts are negative 2 and 4. My vertex is 1, negative 9. We can go ahead and sketch that. Okay. So I'll just write that again. X intercepts are so x in intercepts are x equals um, negative two and four. And our vertex is sorry, one negative nine. One negative nine plot all those points. So just roughly, that's at about 4. This is at about negative 2. So halfway between negative 2 and 4 would be 1 on the x-axis. And so it'll be at 1 and then negative 9 is where the vertex is. Vertex is at, sorry, can't get my pencil going here. Okay, is at 1 negative 9. The parabola goes through the x-intercepts. The vertex is the minimum value. 